Okay, and we're recording this. Uh, so there we go with that. Uh, hello there, Josh. Hello, how are you? Josh is going to do an hour with everybody. If everybody decides that they're going to call, let me make Josh a, uh, a co-host here. Uh, yes, make us co-host. Yes. Do you want Josh Wheeler to be co-host of this meeting? Absolutely. And now let's see if anybody else calls. Otherwise, we may not have a show to do here. Uh, Never know. I'm sure that they will be. Let me also check to make sure that it's uh, happening over here on uh, on uh, Facebook. Let me see here. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, let me see here. There we are. Yeah. Okay. And it's you and I, and there's nobody uh, else. They better hurry up. They better hurry up. If they don't do it soon, uh, uh, we're going to have to just say to hell with it. You know, uh, I, I would have just thought that the people who had just called us. Would yeah, they probably will. Maybe they don't know we're back. Maybe they don't know we're ready yet. Yeah. Well, do you want to just do a kind of monologue about stuff and. I can go for a couple of minutes see and if wait anybody them, calls. And wait for them to call. Um, yeah. Uh, let me just do that. They all do, you know. Uh, yeah, we can we can try. Of course, I said five minutes, so probably a lot of them is right, right about the five. Yeah, they might call here any second. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I had a few problems here when I was trying to start it up. But... Uh, you know, I'm, I mean, you had a lot of callers last week. So. Yeah, it's good. It's good last week. It's uh, I should uh, get some people to call. You know, I thought maybe I'll uh, talk about what anybody else wants to talk about. I mean, I talked a lot last week. So if some people call up, they can talk to me about anything they want. They can ask me about anything they want. No, you probably should um, get Kevin calling. Yeah, he probably should be around somewhere. Yeah. You know, we can... Uh, talk about anything that anybody wants to i think you know there's obviously plenty going on i heard you guys talking about the uh the senate races last night a little bit um i caught the replay i think that's an interesting topic of conversation uh i think that's you know gonna come down to the wire um something else i thought about talking about tonight is i i kind of liked this week that uh i uh saw some a uh, aggressiveness from the white house twitter feed um and and from the from the president some pushback after the student loan deal uh a mm -hmm. lot of a lot of people on the right complaining about that kind of uh you know flapping their feathers all over the place i i like the way the white house pushed back and made sure that they let anybody who cared to read it know that a lot of the same people that were you know, going around decrying this uh, student loan forgiveness were the same exact people who own businesses themselves and took free money from the government, um, you know, during COVID or the PPP program or whatever it was called. You know, I, I, I like that. Uh, I like that Joe Biden pushed back a little bit, finally, you know, a little bit yeah. more of a campaign style rhetoric which he's decent at but you know i think after he took office he he really slowed that down and he was kind of the go along get along guy for quite a while um he seems to be slowly working himself back into campaign mode i thought that was good and uh you know there's a few other things we can talk about the the trump affidavit one is interesting um okay why know, don't I, why don't i leave you to your okay. yourself and hope that somebody calls and i will check back and about five minutes to see if there's anybody uh -huh. talking to you. But meanwhile, you can tell them, you know, go on a little diatribe about what you think, you know. All right. That's what and, we'll do. And that should uh, should go. Anyway, All right. I'm, I'm trying to got a few people how I, call. So. How I All right. Stop video. OK, there we go. Oh, here comes Alan. OK. We should get a few more. We'll get something going. So anyway, how you doing, Alan? I'm doing good. So uh, Chester Nimitz has uh, some history here in the Bay Area, Highway 880, which runs from Santa Cruz up to Oakland, I guess, is uh, used to be called the Nimitz Freeway when I was. Growing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nimitz, uh, he, he gets a lot of praise for his leadership, you know, during the uh, during the Pacific Theater. He, he 
had some good luck, made a few mistakes, like everybody who's in command of a theater that large does. Yeah. But, uh, you know, overall, uh, I think historians agree that he did a, a pretty good job given the circumstances. Uh, you know, I, I've been going through a little bit of his primary sources and doing some research for a project that's coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm actually working on it a lot tomorrow. I got something I got to write and put together. So, yeah, definitely familiar with uh, Chester Nimitz and uh, that whole crew out in the Pacific Theater of, uh, you know, aggressive group of people for the most part they uh they they brought the pressure to bear on the on the japanese navy and the japanese in the land war um you know nimitz had a lot more to do with the land war than i think most people realize so that's interesting now we got kevin here let me get my potato chips i don't know what the hell's going on here yeah you got something going on holy crap Hang oh on. man killed the whole show now so is there a so is there a senate race in california this this time oh, God. i can't remember i don't know i haven't i don't know i maybe you guys aren't you don't you have like anybody up this time for the state yes yeah national no right yeah so you know i think that last night um I don't know if there's anything you guys want to talk about, you know, let me know. But uh, I heard last night, you know, they talked uh, uh, briefly about the the national Senate races. And, you know, there's a story in The Washington Post today and uh, uh, stuff like that, you know, about the National uh, Senate Campaign Committee, you know, on the Republican side, you know, pulling some of their ad buys in like Arizona, um, taking money out. It's actually starting to look for uh a little gloomy for the you know republicans in some of the senate races um that by no means is me saying that they're you know not gonna make headway or whatever i'm just saying i think that six months ago um you know people were saying oh you know the chuck schumer should enjoy his uh leadership why he has it you know and uh mitch mcconnell might have been you know planning to move back into his old office or whatever here pretty soon maybe he was ordering new carpet stuff like that but now it doesn't look nearly as likely you know as it did um i i see a little bit of a that up up close a little bit of vested interest you know here where i live in the state of ohio where uh jd vance or you know whatever his name is since trump couldn't remember it you know, is is running for Senate and finally got the, the nomination um, after Trump sort of remembered his name just long enough to remind everyone that he was going to endorse him. But he's running against a guy named Tim Ryan. And, you know, people like Tim Ryan is he, he it's the reason why Democrats are making a little bit of a comeback. It's not it's not the whole reason. I think that the abortion issue has something to do with it. I think that it's a combination. I think it's the abortion issue. I think that for independence, it's the just absolute uh, 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 support for Trump, no matter what. I mean, it's 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 probably out of control. And and I think some of it is is the candidates the Republicans are running, and I think some of it is the candidates the Democrats are running. So Tim Ryan, for everybody who doesn't know. Um, he tried to be Speaker of the House the last two or three times Democrats were in power. He did challenge Nancy Pelosi. He got some votes. Uh, not a small number either, not like, you know, 10 or anything like that. He got a decent number of votes a couple times. Um, and, you know, Tim Ryan is a guy that I'm telling you right now will probably run for president in the future or will probably be put on the ticket as a vice presidential candidate for one of the next uh, Democratic nominees because they're going to want to carry Ohio. It's very important. And he's a guy that is sort of a more, you know, he's a moderate Democrat. So, I mean, you know, before anyone rolls their eyes at that or whatever, just at least think about, you know, the consequences of pushing those people out of the party. I mean, listen, I'm a fairly moderate Democrat, I guess, you know, so uh, Tim Ryan is going to do a lot of what our current senator does, Sherrod Brown. So, and this is what some of the other candidates and some of these other places are starting to do, like Pennsylvania, where they're, you know, 
now it looks like they're winning, you know, things like that. He is going to talk to you a lot about, you know, trade. He's going to talk to you a lot about labor unions, you know, a lot about education. Uh, you know, some of the things that they are going to say are actually things that Trump uh, and his people agreed with or pushed, like some of these uh, trade laws and uh, tariffs and things like that, because, you know, they're big on jobs in America. So, you know, I mean, manufacturing in America and trying to bring manufacturing back to America. So that is something that I think you're going to hear a lot about in the next couple of months. Uh, you know, Tim Ryan here, uh, the gentleman running in Pennsylvania, and there's a couple other states. Like I said, I was just kind of surprised when, uh, you know, I opened the newspaper up a little while ago and I, you know, I'm reading stories about Republicans don't feel too good about Arizona anymore. I mean, you know, the, the, the Pennsylvania and Ohio would be a flip, you know, I think Arizona would just be a hold, but uh, you know, if I remember right, the, yeah, cause they have the two democratic senators now, but you know, Ohio would be a flip for the first time. Uh, last time Ohio would have had two democratic senators. I want to say would have been sometime during the Clinton administration and it would have been uh, John Glenn and Howard Metzenbaum at the same time. So just a second ago, you read that the Republicans don't care too much about Arizona anymore. Uh, I mean, I read they were moving some of their money out of the, out of Arizona there. I mean, uh, I might be able to wow. find that story. That's, um, hard, that's hard to believe. I, that's hard to, fathom i mean i mean yeah i don't i don't know that i'm saying that they're giving up or, well, I, I i know what you're saying but just to hear that is is mm -hmm. unusual but well you know they lost that state and i think that they thought that they were going to get it back you know pretty easy and that uh, uh mark kelly i did i get his first name right um yep. Yep. you know yeah well okay yeah so republican super PAC cuts ad buy in arizona senate race so, you know, the pullback from one of the most contested states suggests concern about GOP nominee Blake Masters, who's trailing Democratic incumbent Mark Kelly in the polls and in spending. I, I, so, I, you know, I'm not saying it's go, not, go ahead. Just, you know, I, 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 I know a lot of people in Arizona and I know a lot of people that are staunch Republicans, not that, you know, my little group of people that I know are uh, a good uh, sample of what what Arizona is, but I can also say that I know a lot of people that move there from California, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of people moving there from California. Yeah, whether they're going there because they want to join the Republicans or whether they're going there because they want to go there because it's cheaper. Yeah, uh, that's that's a lot of the lot of the things of what's going on there because between between Arizona. Idaho, Oregon, a lot of Californians are moving into those areas, and that's what's changing those areas. It's quite yeah, possible. Probably, yeah. Those areas are turning, yeah. shall we say, blue because of that. Yeah. yeah, I wonder how much the politics of but they sure are the noisy down there they're running. The what's red. that? It sure is noisy red down there, though. Yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah, so I mean, they they grabbed up Arizona in the last uh, race, you know, with Mark Kelly and with Kristen Cinema, and you know that's what we were just saying was I think that they felt like that was sort of a a fluke. They rode a little bit of a wave in there, and that they were going to get it back. Um, and I think they even felt good about it. I mean, you know, you know, Mark Kelly's days are numbered or whatever. But now they're not so sure, you know, they're, you know, these packs are what really fund everything. Okay. We know all that now, right? you know, and you know, the packs don't want to spend their money there. It sounds like this from the story that I was, you know, I just kind of, we had to get started. So I just kind of briefly had a, little, a minute to take a look at it, but look, the packs don't want to spend their money there. Cause they, you know, they, they think it's, if they don't want to spend their money there, that tells you they think they're wasting their money. Right. Yeah, the packs, <laughs> the packs want a guaranteed win. Right. It's right. So, I mean, when a pack spends money like that, money's gone. They don't get it back. There's not a return on their investment if the candidate doesn't win. Correct. Right. Packs are probably run a lot 
especially Republican super PACs, are probably run by a lot of older white people who were in the business world and everything revolves around that kind of uh, conversation. So no ROI for them means no money for you. So that tells me that they don't feel good about their projection um, or their analysis of where the race is going. You know, as we get I'm closer. Looking, I'm looking right now at some of this stuff, and it, it, you're right. There's sure. Kate Hobbs, who's running 73% right now for governor. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that's, and then, and like I said, you know, in Ohio, Tim Ryan is ahead in the polls. Uh, I think fairly sizably. Um, high single digits, maybe, uh, you know, seven or eight points uh, over J.D. Vance. Um, the race in Pennsylvania is really competitive. I don't know what the latest polling is on that. I seem to remember hearing something last week about the Democratic candidate out there. The You know, I, I'm sorry, I cannot remember his name. Uh, uh, the gentleman who had the heart attack, um, despite being off the campaign trail for a month or whatever was maybe either tied or a point or two ahead. I mean, you know, which is, which is really good, really good news. I think if you're a democratic supporter, no, because, right. you know, a lot of people, like you said, six months ago, people were saying, you know, this is this done deal. So, you know, that's, I just, I find that interesting. I don't know how much of it has to do with abortion. I don't know how much of it has to do with Trump. I don't know how much of it has to do with the extreme positions, and I am calling them extreme positions, of some of the candidates they're running. I mean, look, this election denial, um, you know, uh, no exceptions for uh, any sort of abortion anywhere, uh, criminalizing certain other acts, you know. There are some extreme positions by some of these candidates, so I, I don't know what all of it is due to. I I would imagine that it is a combination of all of it that flows down from the top of Trump Mountain, and people, independent-minded people, are finally saying, uh, you know, he's he's got that party going cray cray, and I I don't know that. I don't know that I want any more of that right now. I mean, uh, I kind of liked him at first or whatever, you know, but then they started talking about all this other nonsense and I, I don't know. I think I'm just a little tired of it. I mean, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. What do you think? So he wants these documents back that, that he says were his, but then he says the FBI planted them. Well, which is it? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that stuff's going to work among his non- hardcore people who would literally believe or wouldn't even believe they would just go along with i don't even know if i want to say these people believe it i think they know that that's garbage but they would go along with it anyway you know don't they have to draw a line somewhere but they're not there i mean you know lindsey graham or whatever i mean come on he's a He's a low life piece of garbage, if you ask me. But I know that he knows that the FBI didn't go down there and pull documents out of their trench coat and stick them in a box and then carry the box out and say, oh, look what we found. I mean, you know, to, to what advantage? You know, Lindsey Graham knows that. Right. Uh, but Trump says it and Lindsey Graham goes along with it. See, chief. that's why I, I yep. can't respect people like that. Yeah. I mean, that's, Way to put it. I, I mean, that's, I, I have to lose respect for people who can't have even the slightest, smallest amount of integrity to say, man, I, come on, that, I can't go with you there. You know, that, that didn't happen. Look, right. you, you wrote a tax policy that I agreed with and voted for it. Fine. You, you. You uh, supported this National Parks bill, and I voted for it, fine. You uh, supported this thing here, and I voted for it, fine. But come on, man. The FBI came to your house. 
with a fictitious made up warrant and they planted evidence and they're out to get you. And it's, this is not the movies. This is not a television show. This is real life. And, you know, you've lost your mind and I would still support your policies, but I think it's time for you to step aside. I, I, no one's saying that. I mean, Liz Cheney's saying that, right? I get that. But no one else, you know, in the mainstream of their party. And in my opinion, because uh, that's what I'm being paid to do here is give you my opinion. My opinion is if, you know, if you don't, if you don't have anything to say when, when you're, you're given the opportunity uh, against that, then you're just an enabler of it, okay? Then you're just going along with it. I mean, it's not like a regular person on the street. I mean, you're one of the 535 elected lawmakers for the country of 350 million people with a microphone in your face being asked about one of the most important issues in the last century. And you can't, you can't talk to it any better than that. That's your problem. That is your responsibility. That is your job, okay. as a matter of fact. Right. So, you know, they're derelict in their duty, in, in, in my opinion. And see, that's why I say that I, as much as some of uh, some folks can sympathize with some of his moderations and things like that, that's why I said I, I just cannot find respect in my, in my heart for someone like Mitt Romney or, or, or Rob Portman, the outgoing senator from Ohio, because if they had any respect for themselves or for their country, they would they would get on television and they would say what I just said, which is, listen, the tax policy that we passed was great. The this, that and the other that we did was great. They would name their three or four main things they really care about. And then they would say, but this garbage here is ruining this country and I will have nothing to do with it. And I will lay down on the tracks and sacrifice myself if that's what it takes. I, I think a lot of the Republicans are scared right now because the people that voted to impeach Trump are no longer ha, have been unelected or whatever you want to call it, not reelected. Mm -hmm. And so they're a little nervous to come out and say something. Yeah. You know, and be in that group. But I yeah, you're right. I mean, but and I, but I think I think they're confusing these small local localized you know hardcore trump cells with the national move you know i get that you know liz cheney lost because she happens to represent a constituency that is the hardest of the hardcore trumps right. but all these other republicans who represent districts that are not that way, I think could speak out yep. and survive because the independent minded person, you know, that lives in many of these areas could then perhaps support them. But sure. none of them are even trying it. I mean, you take a guy, like I said, like Mitt Romney, who I don't even know when he's up for reelection. Is it two more years or maybe it's four? What well, what's he worried about? I mean, you know, what's Rob Portman, who's retiring, worried about? Right. You know, Why I mean, what is what is what is Chuck Grassley, who's one hundred and seventy five years old and will probably be dead this time next year? Well, what's he worried about? Right. I mean, what 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 what's he worried about? I, I, I don't understand it. I think Liz, Liz Cheney may have lost the election, but I, I got to tell you, I think she's going to be a thorn in the Republican Party side. Well, she's made clear that, you know, she's not going to go. I mean, for one, she doesn't go away till January anyway, right. because her term doesn't end until then. And, you know, she's made clear that in that period of time, she is going to remain active, which is her right. Uh, you know, it's and and her duty. Right. You know, so look, I have no problem with that. I mean, because the way well, she's I am fine with people that I don't agree with who conduct themselves in a professional manner. I mean, I, isn't that what it comes down to lately? I mean, I am fine with people who I do not agree with who conduct themselves in a professional manner. Here is who I am. Here is what I believe. Here is why I believe it. But I, I, I do not believe personally 
that Ted Cruz conducts himself in a professional man. Okay. I think he acts like a fucking child, yep. you know? Now, if, if you want to call up and say, oh, what about fucking Maxine Waters? Well, she acts like a fucking child too most of the time. Okay. It's fine. That, that, that's fine. I don't care. You know, that's legitimate if you want to say it. I think so. You know, they go around and they say stupid things too, but they're not the national problem right now. <laughs> they're not the national narrative right now. You know, Trump's party is, and they're the ones, you know, Ted Cruz does not conduct himself in a professional manner. I mean, he's a crybaby in a whiner. Rand Paul is a crybaby in a whiner. I mean, you know, every time Rand Paul doesn't get exactly what he wants, when he wants it, how he wants it, is wah, 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 wah. You know, so that's what I don't understand about the Trump party right now. And I, I know I've been saying that for a long time, you know, that I don't understand because I, I, I don't I don't understand how these folks have abandoned, you know, their own uh, beliefs that I know they had before because they said these things before they told us so and and they seem to have changed their mind hello to Matt who I have not met yeah no this is my first time uh calling in I usually am like in the uh uh, comment section I'll talk to Kevin about the NHL and stuff go right ahead talk about anything you want Ranger fan yeah, yeah. I was just, uh, I, I just figured I'd call in. I never done it before, so I was just like, ah, you know, whatever. I just. We're joined. good to have you. Is there anything you want to talk about, or were you listening and something made you call? Oh no, no. I just, I okay. just, well, I just, well, I don't know what you guys were talking about, but, but uh, yeah. Well, just, uh, for a minute okay. there, we were talking about, uh, you know, we were talking about Donald Trump. Uh, we we were kind of on other stuff before that too. I we're not. We're not all about Trump on this network. Uh, you know, I, he's got his own network for that. So we, we're only half about Trump. You know, we spend the other half on uh, other things. I I haven't yet set myself up for suicide, so we can only be half about Trump for the time being. So I, I got to get a will and all that kind of stuff. Do you, first, think, so. Josh, do you think Trump will run again? Oh, I think he will. I mean, I don't know why he wouldn't. It's just, I've said, you know, before that running for president, even for people who don't get the nomination, can be a money making business. You know? sure. <laughs> I mean, just ask, uh, you know, ask Sarah Palin. I mean, Sarah Palin is an idiot. She has nothing to offer anybody in the entire state of Alaska, in the uh, entire United States of America. I mean, she has nothing to offer anyone. She's not a serious person, she's not a professional. Um, she has She's no a, clue how government works from her back porch, right? You know, I mean, uh, she couldn't she couldn't find her way to Washington D.C. I mean, it you know, but here she is. Run, why is she running? Because she can make some money now. I mean, She's a grifter, you know, she's yeah. a con artist. Yeah, I mean, you know, if she gets elected to Congress, she'll she'll do the Lauren Boebert thing. You know, she'll wander around and say incredibly stupid shit and you know then she'll put a book out in a couple years or you know she'll raise some money to a super PAC and remodel her kitchen for the third or fourth time on the government's you know on your dime so speaking of sorry to interrupt but speaking of stupid shit see what marjorie taylor green said she was like she was like talking about how horrible the student uh debt uh you know student debt relief was and then the white house officially like responded to her talking about she received literally 183 uh grand in ppp student loans i'm glad that they like directly responded to that because that's how you really have to do it yeah, mm-hmm. I talked about, yeah, we started out, I started with that real briefly with Alex. I mentioned that we could talk about it and that, you know, I was glad to see this week that really for the first time, I think since the election, the White House Twitter feed, it it got, you know, it got aggressive. You know, there's a story in the Washington Post today, I think, about, you know, welcome back to the White House Twitter feed, not the mundane, you know, today the president signed the we love, you know, National Parks Appreciation Day Act or whatever, you know, it was, it was, hey, the following 15 congressmen, something like this, went on television today and told you that giving away $10,000 
and student loan relief was the worst thing that's happened to America, you know, since Pearl Harbor got bombed. And oh, by the way, we just like to let you know that those 15 people receive the following and free money from that same government for their own private businesses that they own uh, under the, what was it called? The PPP or whatever. And two or three years ago, they're not going to pay any of that back. It was free. And, you know, a couple of them did some kind of shaky stuff with it. So you might want to look at that on your own time if you want. It was nice that they put that out. I mean, and I don't want to hear anybody complaining about it because, well, that's a little too political or what? Well, first of all, it's a political branch of the government. Second of all, the president's a politician. And third of all, uh, listen, Trump, he couldn't go 15 minutes without putting something like that out. And y'all loved it every time. I know some of y'all that jerked off to it, as a matter of fact. So shut up. I mean, you know, they told you the truth and you didn't want to hear it. Oh, not my fucking problem. Right. I mean, but that's 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 exactly what happened. You know, I mean, that's a Marjorie Taylor Greene. Again, I mean, you know, if you, you put her and Sarah Palin on the same level, if you ask me, I mean, I, 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 I you couldn't tell the difference between the two of them because it's the same way. It's, it's I mean, and we can talk about the student loan issue because, look. I have personal knowledge and personal experience with that. I've never talked about it, but, you know, I do have loans. I do owe money. Um, I have been to uh, for-profit colleges and nonprofit colleges. I went uh, on campus for an undergraduate. Uh, I did part of a master's on campus. I finished another part of it online for the first one. I got a second master's later um and i am working on a huge project and a graduate certificate in world war ii state so i have a lot of experience with both kinds of colleges and you know some of them are not the most uh, i don't want to say they lie to people but they're not the most transparent um but they want to get you signed up to go to college right okay so I don't know that they lie, but they don't tell you anything that they don't have to unless you specifically ask. And then the answers that you get, you know, about cost and things may be a little skewed. I mean, I'm sure your army recruiter said, hey, you have any job in the army you want, bro. Don't worry. When you get there, we'll, we'll get it worked out. I mean, bullshit, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm but, just starting to go through all that stuff with my daughter right today. Right. I mean, applying for the federal loans are applying for all that stuff right now. Yeah, I mean, look, the the 10K, you know, and for somebody like me, you know, I, I won't get too much into mine because, you know, I don't want to argue with people about it. But look, there are certain things that if they did for mine, I might be like, well, OK, you know, we could work something out now and I could uh, maybe I'll 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 get started on these and, you know, we'll take care of it, whatever. But there are people that work very hard you know, that went to college and expenses do get backed up. It is difficult, especially if you're trying to go to college and work a full-time job. Um, I did, I did not go to college right after I graduated high school. I was out maybe like three or four years. I didn't even start going until I was like maybe 22 or 23. Um, we built this house at the same exact time. You know, I wasn't making as much. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, I get how people can get into situations and I don't know anyone that has student loan debt that was looking for, you know, to like rip the government off. I mean, I don't know anyone that took all this money and bought, you know, like TVs and, 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 you know, tickets to the big game or whatever in it. On, <laughs> and it's now not going to have to pay it back. I mean, it went to education, most of it. I mean, there are ways with your loan refunds that you can get money that's supposed to be for living expenses, things like that. But these people are paying back for an education. And I personally, giving them, I mean, it's it's $10,000. I, I get that with all the people that went, like Phil was trying to say, it's a huge number. It's $500 billion or whatever it was. I don't care. I really don't. I don't care. A fraction of the PPP Super, money. Yeah. 
Kind but I mean, it was what rocket, it was. It was right. it was three years ago that super duper rich people got their taxes cut. Right. Yeah. I mean, and and nobody said, "Oh my God, if you give all this money to these rich people, they're just going to spend, spend, spend." If fucking inflation be out of control, well, come on. I mean, <laughs> you know, Trump you know? gave uh, small businesses this uh, fifty thousand dollars, and the person that was yelling about it most on Alex's show last night or the night before. Yeah, I know. I mean, you know, some of that money. And yeah, uh, and the government, the government has always done some of this to begin with through tax relief. Okay, um, there is the Hope Credit. Uh, there is a couple others. I mean, if you're going to college and you're working, you you get various tax credits. You get one of them for four years for your undergraduate. You get another for two more years for a graduate level, and it is a it is a direct credit off your taxes. And in some cases, it was designed so that if you were kind of in like someone like my tax bracket, average or whatever, and you were paying your taxes all year, the credit would reduce your taxable income by so much that some. That you might get like five, six, seven thousand dollars in a tax refund when you normally only got like twelve hundred or something, you know. And that money was designed to put back in your pocket because you were working and going to college at the same time, which meant your expenses were probably higher. You couldn't work as much overtime, whatever, you know. And it was designed as a reward and as a a motivating factor to get people into college. So. The government has always done something That's how I went similar to that. So the I, fact that they're doing more now is it's just another step, you know, to get people to go get an education. I mean, and I, I would say, what, what what is wrong with that? I mean, there is nothing wrong with that. I mean, if, you, if, if you're out there and you think there's something wrong with that, well, then call up here and tell me what you think is wrong with it. Right. But you're not going to beat my life experience in that. I mean, I, 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 I don't, you know, does everyone need to go to college? No. You know, I went to a trade school, right? That's why I didn't go to college. Okay. When I first got out of high school, if you want to get real personal about it, I went to a trade school. I learned to trade. I learned a skill. I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I could have went to Harvard. I could have went to Yale, but I said, fuck that. I'm not going to do that. No, nah, I'm going to, you know, I came from this hardworking blue collar family, neither parent graduated from high school, you know, working two jobs. People don't really know, but I came from nothing. Okay. Nothing. We were like completely poor. Okay. Like completely. When I was young, I was like, I, I can't go to Harvard. I can't go to, you know, even though I could have got in, I mean, I know. Cause it like, I actually was there, but I, I was embarrassed to go. I'm fucking dead serious. I mean, I was like, no, I, 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 that's not me. That's not where I come from, you know, and I, I'm going to go get a trade and I'm going mean, because I was so stupid. I, mean, I was like the smartest, stupid person ever. <laughs> Why were you embarrassed to go? Well, I don't know. Cause it's just, like I said, it's just not what my family did. I, I said, no, I'm just going to go get a job. Like my, my, my parents did, you know, my dad was an HVA installer and my, my mother was a florist, and then at night, they managed a big apartment complex. My mom did all the management. My dad did all the maintenance. I mean, it was a big 60, 70 units, you know, or whatever. I mean, it was a pretty big complex. I mean, you know, they did that for decades. I mean, I, I that's how I learned all my skills. You know, when I was five years old in the evening, we didn't do much at home because they would come home, and they would eat dinner, and then they would go to the apartment complex. And uh, that's where I learned how to paint and take a toilet out and change a faucet and wire up a new electrical outlet and change a hot water heater, you know, and I just, I got on that path and I, I, I felt like, and I, I don't know, I don't, I, I, I don't know how to become a professional, you know, like I, I won't, I'll be like an outsider in my own family or whatever, you know? So I didn't do any of that. I, I went and then I realized later that I made a mistake. And, you know, uh, and, and my parents would never have resented me if I went or anything. I wasn't, I don't want to make it sound like that, but I didn't think that's what I should do. And then a couple of years later, I said, oh my God, I was so stupid, you know, and then I started fixing my mistake. Alan? So I, I, uh, 
I came from a family that both my parents were college educated. My mother had a bachelor's, my father had a PhD in electrical engineering. So he kind of talked me into, I, I always liked dealing with electricity. And so but when I was 18, 19 years old, I went to engineering school. And then I became a police officer and I found out I didn't want to be an engineer, I wanted to be a cop. And the city said, we'll pay for your, your schooling if you want to go off and do something. So I went off and got a four-year degree in microbiology. And because I thought, do I want to be a cop forever? Well, I want something to fall back on. Maybe I can be a doctor or a nurse or something. And that, you know, I got my degree and never really used it. Actually, it's come in handy during COVID, understanding that all my friends contact me. And, you know, as you can probably tell, I'm fairly knowledgeable from Alex to show about that stuff. But, you know, uh, the city paid for the college time. And so I wouldn't be entitled to any of this money. But I think it's I think it's a good thing. I think college is expensive, and a mm -hmm. lot of parents are struggling right now. Oh and, yeah, and uh, you know, you got a son or a daughter that's in college, and you, they can put ten thousand dollars back in your pocket. You know, these people are going to be progressive. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, don't wanna, I don't want to downplay this. They're not going to be ditch diggers. They're going to be something at a professional level. I mean, well. Mm -hmm. We need the other thing, too, just, I guess, real quick is I think there's some misconception that a majority of these people who are going to get this benefit are like 22 or 23 years old or whatever. I am telling uh -oh. you that no. when I got my education, when I started and I went back, I was like 23, maybe 24 or something in that area, right? maybe 25. And I went at night to a community college, a very large community college, a very good one, okay, in the area that I live in, very well-known, very respected, all that, but I was there, and every night, all the rooms were full of people going to college to get a business degree or psychology or whatever, okay, and they were all my age or older, 25, 30, 35, 40 years old, sure. and we're all around the same area, and I know that none of them were like fucking millionaires and were paying cash for it. Okay. They were borrowing money. I mean, almost everybody probably was. So that relief is going to go to a lot of younger people, probably, or their parents or whatever. That's fine. But a good majority of that, too, is going to go to people who are 35, 40 years old, like myself, middle aged, own a home. Right. Have a car to work a job, all sure. that, you know, I mean, it's, it's not, you're not handing any money out to the, so the guy that went to Harvard and got uh, his uh, education and now he's making $800,000 on wall street and he gets a free ride. That, that is the equivalent of the welfare queen who drove her brand new fucking Cadillac to get her welfare check in the 80s it's a bunch of made up horse shit okay right. <laughs> yeah. that that's it's it's made up okay there was no welfare queen in the 80s who took her nine kids down to get her welfare check in their brand new car all right that was some made up racist horse shit in the 1980s it's the same as this now i mean i'm as i think i'm fair i mean uh, you know that's 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 what it is i mean it's so there's nothing wrong with relief going to people who need some relief absolutely but, no, i mean i could take it some absolutely. folks it may get them into repayment and make the government more money yeah see I, 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 what i was saying is i don't have any loans to repay they were all paid for but i am for mm -hmm. i have friends of mine that are 30 35 years old uh, doing whatever they're doing, and they got a master's degree or whatever, and they're still paying on loans. And I'm, I'm 72 think, you know, years old. I just finished paying the last payment on my kids' loan, college loans, just in August this month. I mean, uh, uh, I think so. There's going to be like a really large discussion about whether or not the president has the power to do this. Which, for as much as it will benefit me, by the way, I probably am going to lean toward the fact that he doesn't. Okay. I'd have to really think about it, but I'm I'm probably going to say that he doesn't, that it probably won't hold up. But besides that, I thought what was 
you know, a little bit more important is some of the rules that they wanted to change. I almost could care a little bit less about the $10,000 as I could about the repayment rules. So, you know, the 10% rule of your discretionary income being cut to five and then redefining what that discretionary is. Um, and I'm not the expert on this, but I'm just saying I've kind of been through some of it before and they like to put some things in like your discretionary income that really aren't discretionary. You know, like, I'm sorry, but in America, owning a car isn't like discretionary. Exactly. How are you going to get to work? Okay. Right. I don't live in fucking New York City. It's not discretionary. I mean, it's just not. Right. You know, so, and, and by the way, there really aren't any cars out there that you can like go buy and your payment's $100 a month. I mean, cars cost $500 a month. Or, you know, I give or take. I mean, some of you know, the car payment is the first insurance, gas, upkeep. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think that the the dropping the 10 down to five, okay, and then redefining um, some of the rules about what makes up that 5% is actually more of a net positive than the $10,000 in relief and is a wise move. And that move right there, is geared toward getting people to start repaying, you know, I mean, to get them on a solid plan to get it repaid. And then they also dropped the amount of years before you could start getting into forgiveness. So uh, again, if you think that that's just, oh, that's free and that's wrong. Okay, then fine. Then we're not going to agree. I mean, you can call up and make your argument. I'll listen to it. That's fine. But I'm just saying that, uh, that's how it's going to start getting people to put money back into the system. And if you think the system is corrupt and these colleges are ripping people off, well, I don't even know that I'm going to disagree with a lot of that, but what do you want to do about it? I mean, you know, then then change the rules and stop making loans and just de don't educate the country. Okay. If that's what you want to do, then that's your idea. Then call up and tell me that's your idea. And if we don't agree, then go fucking convince the people of it, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, but for right now, that's not what we do. You know? So, I mean, is is your daughter going to do loans, Kevin? Or, I mean, are you going to try to pay for it? Your mic. Know? I think he's muted, but. You're I muted. Mean, it's off. Kevin, your mic is off. You're still muted. Yes. Um, she doesn't even know where she's going yet. We're just in the starting process of it. And she. You got it. You got it. What, what is she a. Uh, so she's not a senior now then, right? Yeah, she's a senior. Oh, okay. So you are up against it, right? <laughs> yeah. Better get moving, huh? Yeah. yeah. Applications are going to start going out here. Next. Well, so she just started her senior, right? Did Everyone's just going back to school now, right? Yeah. She's so she'll graduate. Yeah. What's that? She's been in school for about a month. Okay. So, yeah, you got a little bit of time, I guess, and right? She won't graduate. Yeah, the this. applications start going in in November and start mm -hmm. getting stuff back mm -hmm. in December. If, you know, yeah, and we've looked at a couple of universities and a couple of states up in Oregon, but. Yeah. yeah and she, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. You were telling me about that. Yeah, yeah. okay. No, never mind. I, yeah, you told me. Okay, so. Yeah, but I mean that stuff gets expensive. I mean, you know, well, that's, was, uh, uh, we're already, if we she, she was eyeballing, you know, University of Oregon, and that's fifty grand just to walk in the door. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. not 50, for a year. Grand. Easy, not for, for a year. year. And then you got a dorm. Then you got some schools are Alan. Holy shit! Yeah, it's fifty thousand dollars a year for just the university in San Antonio. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. That's just tuition. That doesn't count room and board. Right. You got to get the room and board and then you get books and all that other that, stuff. Yeah. You, we figured it's going to be about 65 grand. Good thing yeah. your daughter's got a rich daddy. You know, I, I I don't know what you guys think, but I mean, fine quality of education in all those places, but I sort of believe that education is like what you make of it. Like, I agree. You, yeah. And I sort of lean toward, so what's wrong with going to maybe like a really good community college? I'm not talking about like a scammer, right? Okay. But I'm just talking about like a, a, a good one. That's going to be like 10% of that, by the way. And then you making the most of the education. So you take a history course or whatever, 
Okay. And this is what they tell you to do and all that, but you get into it. Like you go overboard with it. You get more books out of the library or whatever. Like you invest your time. In it. You make the education. <clears throat> well, she's, she's been evaluating that, you know, even for the first two years going and getting all the, the credits that she needs and then going to the last two years to what, you yeah. know, she a lot really of people do that. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's going to cut things in half. Right. Because it depends on what you're doing and what you plan on doing. I mean, if you're going to go be a doctor, you got to go to college. Yeah. If you're going to go yes. do what she's looking at, she's, she's into music, she's into art, and she's into English. All that stuff can be done partially and yeah. then you know work her way up and then go to the business side and start doing the business stuff in, in you know college and go work your way into the marketing stuff and everything else that you would want to do with art you know that's what she wants to do eventually get into something like, you know where you're doing marketing or whatever she's you know doing designing yeah. clothes or whatever it is you know yeah. um but you know you gotta figure that stuff out we, <laughs> we only got about nine months to do it yeah yeah i mean i just There's a lot of good community colleges around that you know right. you up for that kind of stuff right i mean it, i don't know i mean in some ways it it does depend on what you want to do yeah. you know sometimes the education at some of those you know uh entities is is in certain classes even better you know because exactly uh, professors that you have are more engaged or have, the class have, sizes are a lot smaller. We have a community college here called Foothill College. It's off of, uh, down just outside of Cupertino. Foothill College, and I found this out last week. Foothill College actually has professors from Stanford that are, yeah. that are teaching there. They teach with the same books, the same curriculum, and they're 15 miles away from Stanford and they do everything the same that they would do if they were Stanford yeah. and it's not even a quarter of the price. Right. Yeah. Well, that's and what I'm like, saying is like, you know, why I would went you through... go anywhere else. Why would yeah, you go down I mean, and you're in a nice big building and it's all old and everything else. Right. Stanford versus Foothill college. You know, what's the difference? Yeah, about fifty thousand dollars a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Look, I I went I went through a program, you know, and I had to take uh, two Civil War classes at one one time, and they were taught uh, by a, a professor named Stephen E. Woodworth, who was a huge professor at Texas A and M University, and is on the Amazon bestseller list. And <laughs> the the program that I went through used a, a portable format that he was in charge of. You know, I mean, it was, and he was basically teaching the class that he teaches at, uh, I think he's at Texas A&M. Uh, so, I mean. You find those niches, then you, know, you put yourself. I, I mean, you were using, you know, the, the textbook for the class was his book. Yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, it, and it was a graduate level class. It's not a textbook. It was a, it was more of like a, a an academic uh, narrative history of uh, you know both times of the the period of the Civil War that you were working on. I mean, I, I, I th that same program that I was in later was taught by a, 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 a at the time he was at the Gettysburg College was taught by uh, Alan Guelzo who who was like a brand only written ten Matthew books and is the Goodwill store that's never been used. Yeah, so I mean, you know, it is it is possible. You know, uh, you know, they use a lot. You know, I was in a program that uses a lot of material from the U.S. Army War College, from the U.S. Naval War College. Um, you know, they have a partnership with them because they work a lot with the military and they use a lot of their materials. Uh, you know, same courses, same curriculum, um, you know, same stuff that they teach people at Annapolis or West Point. Yeah. You know, and as part of their military history program. So, you know, but but without the without the high cost, uh, that's always something to, to think about. You know. Where where do you live, Matt? Uh, I'm in New York. Uh, New York I actually. State or, what's up? New York State or New York City? Uh, Long Island. So it's like right outside of the city. Um, I actually um, start my master's program on Sunday. I go, uh, it's a Zoom class, so I start it then. And it's, uh, again, my master's in uh, English. Mm -hmm. So. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so you have firsthand experience with all of that. I mean. Yep. I mean, if I'm sitting in a room and you're talking, 
or I'm sitting here on Zoom and you're talking. Am I not hearing the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, people have different opinions on that. And I get that, you know, well, you network with people and it's good and along and everything. Okay. But I don't know. I mean, at some point, uh, maybe that's for the 18 to 22 year olds. But at some point, if you go back as an adult, I mean, you're not, you're, you're past that meeting new people or shit. You're trying to get yeah. some money. You're trying to get some education to make some more money. I mean, I, I don't need to meet any new people. I'm completely good, right? You know, I mean, me, I'm fine. I, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm like, yeah, my, I'm like the exact opposite. Education. Like, I'm just like the exact opposite. Like, I feel like the, I just, I, I agree with you. I get what your point is, but I also yeah. see like it's like I love the interaction, and I found Some my people do. Like, yeah, and in class, I don't know, like, um, I, I did my, I just got my bachelor's degree, so, um, I half of that was on zoom and then the last uh semester we went back to into in-person teaching yep. uh and i found myself a lot more interactive a lot more you know social yep. it's i guess it's just different strokes for different folks but well i mean there's there's a crap ton of work out there about this i i took an entire uh certification course to be able to teach online at one point and that but that's exactly what they're going to cover the pedagogy or whatever you want to call it, you know, I always pronounce that one. I can't do this. Sorry. You know, how do people learn, right? How do they learn best? Everyone learns differently. Uh, you know, so how do you find out how people learn? How do you design a course? I mean, you know, I was in a course that went on for weeks about this. And it just literally was all about how people learn. Who are you teaching? Who is your audience? Um, and, you know, when you take something like, a, like an online format or even the in-person format, but not everybody learns the same. Some people will learn from your lecture. Some people will learn from your notes. Some people will really learn from your PowerPoint presentation and read what you have on the screen, but aren't hearing the words that come out of your mouth. You know, some people won't listen to a word you say, but will read every word of what you assign them to read and they will retain it. Some people won't read a damn word of it and will find another way. I mean, it, you know, it, 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 it just depends. But see, that goes back to where I said, but then education is what you make of it. If you want to memorize something for a real short period of time and pass exams and get a degree, that is different from I want to absorb this and I want to make this my life's work. You know, I mean, if you're teaching uh, American history uh, one, you know, from the founding to uh, the Civil War or Reconstruction 1876 or whatever, to undergraduates, who all have to take a required history course, but 99.9% .9 of them are going to be a psychologist or an accountant or a business major or whatever. That is totally different from teaching a room full of MA or PhD candidate history students who all want to get an MA or a PhD in history and teach it somewhere. You know, that's two totally different audiences, two totally different things. So, you know, that just depends. I mean, that's that's the kind of thing that, uh, you know, that people have to think about. And that's that's why I've always said, you know, education is what you make of it, because I've made a lot out of mine over the years, but other people might not have. And, you know, I went into the history format, for example, because uh, I like to work alone and historians work alone. They do a lot of reading. They do a lot of writing. They don't do a lot of interacting. Some of them do, but, you know, for the most part in the, in the day to day. So it is what you make of it. Well, AB is back. yeah, I'm back. I figured uh, it's about time for you to wrap up here. So I would help you do it. it is. Uh, yeah. You got yourself a nice little crowd here. Got a few people and some new people. Yeah. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's been sounding good, you know, and they even got somebody we've never had on before, Matt. Thank you, Matt. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And to everybody, uh, anything else you want to say, Josh, before we? No. If you do any more of these, out. I'll, uh, I'll uh, take anybody that wants to call. I'll make a commitment. I'll talk less. Go, go ahead. Call. Get people to call up and talk more. I'll, I'll, I promise I can talk less. Tell me what you think. We're talking to. I don't know. I mean, I we're going to fill the time. I mean, I got plenty to, that I can say, but I I just, you know, want people to know, call up and I will let anyone say what they 
want to say. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everyone I has these opinions and beliefs. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. No, it's good. Anyway, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining Josh. Josh, you should thank everybody. I do thank everybody for calling, man. Appreciate it, Matt. Josh. Good to see somebody new. Thanks to Charlie. Thanks to Kevin. Um, thank you, Alan. Okay. We enjoyed and good, it. And I'll say good night to everybody, too. All right. Bye. Have a good, Bye. good night. Bye. See you all later. Thank you. Thanks.